Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's RB, and here we are with our inaugural episode of Art Leads to Music. Now, the whole point of this series is to draw. And my primary subjects are going to be metal musicians, or people important to the whole metal scene and the whole metal movement. Because, you know, I just fucking love metal. So what I'm going to be doing is drawing from reference, but I'm going to take those pictures of uh, famous figures and then I'm going to transform them into something a little bit. Um, now I like to do stuff a bit muted, so we're going to primarily see me working with this here Conti pencil. And it's going to be a pigma brush in black. That's going to be what I'm going to do my inking in because it's going to give me a nice big fat chunky line. And then instead of colors, I've got these Koi pens, uh, also from Sakura. Basically everything except for the Contis I have here is made by Sakura. Um, so these are Koi's, they're grays, and there are different levels of warmth and coolness. You've got some with some red in them, you've got some with some blue in them. So uh, what I did last week was a nice little portrait of Papa Emeritus II, and that was highly muted. And what I want to do today is I'm going to work on one of the nameless ghouls. Um, so, of course, first I'm going to start with this. So, first I'm going to start with this copy pencil and I'm going to start roughing out my figure's head. And since it's a portrait, what I really want is going to be primarily the head and to some extent the shoulders. So what I've got here is this is, this is like the primary line. This is like where the face is going down to. So whenever you first put a line down, a lot of times it's just not going to be exaggerated enough. You want to get it really expressive. So this first line, that's an okay line. It's nowhere near where it needs to be. You really need to exaggerate it. So a lot of papers, heads down. So here's sort of like the line where the forehead is going to be. And then we're gonna start sort of roughing out the head. Now the way you build the head, is of course you've got this big old cranium and this shape you're gonna transform as necessary. So I'm gonna keep it nice and loose. I'm gonna keep it nice and fast. And that's about where I want him to be. I want his head to be back. I want that line of his neck to be out here. And I want his shoulders to be out here. So this shoulder, since it's closer to the camera or the viewpoint, it's going to be higher than this shoulder. The shoulder feels fairly accurate, and I want to capture some of that ghost medallion, which is going to be somewhere around here. So I feel like, yeah, this is fairly accurate. Now what I want to do is figure out where all my landmarks are going to be. So I want the forehead somewhere over there. And the forehead is very well defined. I'm going to come down here, get some line. And I sort of want to follow this contour. Because this contour gives me a pretty good idea of where all these bones, all this internal structure is going. Because the mask is pretty expressive for not having a mouth. It's going to come down here and it's going to fade into darkness, which is really cool because now I've got to get really granular with my focus so I can show you where it's going. And as you can see where the head is here, I'm already unhappy with where the neckline is. So it's going to come out more over here, it's going to come out there. And right now we've got just about the basic shape of the head. And so now we've got this guy here. We've got one horn. Now we've got the other horn. And I want to say to myself, is that fairly accurate? I think the base of the horn is going to be about here. And don't worry about all these lines. This is what we call pentimento. This is stuff that's going to be just erased later. And there's going to be the bare ghost of it, which is very, very convenient and relevant because of course, we're drawing a nameless ghoul, which is one of the band members of Ghost, or Ghost BC, depending on where you are. Uh, but since they're no longer having those copyright issues, we can go ahead and just call it Ghost. 
So my nose is gonna end just about here. So if the nose ends here slightly below that, that's my reference point uh, for where his shoulder's gonna be. And the angle of the shoulder is gonna be something like that. So we've got something that's pretty much approximating where we're gonna be. And just because I'm gonna show you that we're committed to this, we really don't care too much about having extreme accuracy. We wanna get it as perfect as possible just so long as we remember that perfection is relative. So we're gonna come down, I'm gonna make these lines. I don't like these lines, but now I'm committing to these lines. And I've gotta think and stop here. It's like, is this too much curvature to this nose? Does it have to be chunkier? Where is this? Uh, and I'm gonna include a link for you guys so you can take a look at the source that I found. But now I want a little bit more in the way of reference. Once again, taking extreme care to draw exactly whatever it is that I see. Versus thinking I see something and then referring to those symbols that are inside my damn head. And those symbols that are inside my damn head aren't going to get me what I want which is a fairly accurate drawing without trying too damn hard. So right now, I'm just gonna break this down into simple shapes. More simple shapes. And I'm gonna figure out like the nose is gonna be so about there, something like that. I'm not too worried about this line yet because I'm worried about the relationship here between this line, which I already inked, which is on the bridge of the nose, and then this line back here. So we've got this line coming down from the eye, and then we've got this line, which leads uh, to where the mouth would be if our subject had a mouth, which he does not. Just flatten that out a little bit. See, don't worry about how it looks on paper, worry about how it looks compared to what you want it to look like. And then compare what you want it to look like to what it actually is. Because from here, I'm like, well, this nose has to be a little bit better. And so I'm gonna have to use some really nice shading in order to pull that off. Because this line that I already inked here has to get brought out over here to where that's a little bit more accurate. And then that gives us a different cheek line here. It's a little bit more uh, extreme, a little bit more uh, concave where it comes in. Which is okay because we don't want an exact one-to-one -one representation. Of, uh, who is this, Aether, I believe? I don't want a one-to-one -one representation. I want something that's fairly accurate, something that feels like I drew it. And it's not something that I just took and reproduced it exactly. Because that's not at all what I care about. It's really awesome, like freaking, this, this line is awesome. This line is great. When you see the actual reference picture, maybe you'll see the, uh, the economy of line that I'm going for. Because I think it just looks really good. line or under the horn we've got this ridge here and this is where we've got some hair and so we're just gonna give it a quick 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 shape and a really quick quick shape here for the hairline and then the actual shape of the horn that was just a symbol that I put down which wasn't exactly accurate the actual horn is like coming more at you. So it's like this, it's not like, we're not like this. This one's like this because of the way we are. And that also goes with the way this horn comes out here as well. Instead of coming up more like it did originally, it comes out more because our head is tilted down and forward. And then we got these ridges back here and they come to the back of the head and the back of the mask in the back of the neckline, and there's the collar, 
and that goes over here into the rest of this profile. So now, uh, now let's get a little bit dangerous. I'm gonna start going in some lines. And like I said, we don't really care about being 100% accurate. What I care about is getting the feeling down. And I may have, you know, changed my tune like 30 or 40 times as I do this. But like I said, I really don't care. I want the feeling. And so I'm not exactly going to follow what happens here. And because of the nature of the way I'm doing this, the way it's gonna come out is you're gonna see a bunch of different values, of like a lot of black lines. And then I'm gonna go over those with like other tones and whatnot. And that's gonna be an attempt to blend in just a little bit more. You know, I've got the base of the horn, as you can already see, this doesn't match up here, which is fine. I'm already making changes on the fly. Good, I'm fairly happy with that one. And like this one, I like this line. That line feels good. We've got this line here that bridges that right there. We've got that. We've got this one overarching line here. And then we've got this ridge that hair ridge and that hair ridge and I'm looking back for confirmation to see where I put these other lines because these other lines give me sort of a relationship where things go like here's my spacing if this is over here then this has to be in this area and that's just according to uh, this reference picture that I have here in front of me fairly accurate. Here's that line. There's going to be a lot of shading here. I'm not too worried about it. I know it's messy. Not overly concerned. That line is not accurate for shit. Which is okay. There's going to be a lot of shading going on in this area, and so that, of course, gives me the opportunity to fix it. And as you can see, I am making adjustments in my relationships between these lines as necessary. So this comes up here, and what I get here is this guy, and we get progressively more of a fat curve. That's not exactly right, but I'm not too concerned because I can just fix it with that. Looks like a mess. That's fine too. You know why? Don't completely care. You just want to get the raw feeling of who this character is. So ultimately. That. I've got this ridge here. Good. And then we're going to come down and we're going to make this guy up. We're going to find that. And then we've got to get a rough feel for this. There's a lot of, uh, not a lot of value here. It's really dark in this section. This entire region is like absolute utter darkness. Here. So we've got the nose there, and then we go over. And that's the seam where the sleeve comes down. And then because this is something I actually care about, I'm gonna come down here. So the medallion doesn't start here, there's another button. Rope intersects there. The other end of the rope comes here. And we're going to just very roughly 
sketch out this section. And that's perfect. Now don't get caught up on so many sections because when you're looking at this, this is the actual chin of the mask. This is not the bottom of the neckline. This is not this section here where you've got shirt. So this line doesn't really intersect there. This line is its own area. Okay, so now I want to get a rough. I'm not gonna overly commit to this yet. I've got to figure out where exactly I am. And I've already shifted this up. I want more of the emblem up. And my composition is uh, starting a little bit higher than it should be if I want to get the entire emblem. So if I wanted, to, if I was starting here, this is where you know, I would get the whole emblem. So instead I'm just shifting the emblem up so I can get enough of it in so I can hint at it. And then once I go back, now I've got to go and get the perspective on it because it's on his chest and it's this way and it's over here and it's hanging off him a little bit. So it's just, I mean, we're just making adjustments as we go. Good. A lot of these other fields are like just sheer black, so we're not going to go over the starting with them. So here's a tip, I'm working on newspaper. This paper's not archival, it's basically garbage. It's good for scraps. It's good for quick stuff like this. Uh, but we're just a little bit over 10 minutes in and we've got him, you know, basically roughed out where we need him. So I'm not gonna be overly concerned. I'm gonna start making commitments to other shapes. The easy part about this is the inside of this other oh, supply. So I can puzzle out this actual shape very slowly over time. And I'm not going to do a full black fill because it's just going to be a waste of a ton of my ink. Um, there's two ways to go about this, and I'm going to go sort of the lazy manner. And I want to sort of interlocking triangles. that more effectively, of course, we can go back in. We can go over it with black. We're going to take advantage of the values that are already inherent um, in this piece. And so this piece, all this crap's going to disappear. Because all the actual defined shape is going to be in white, or in this case grayscale, because we're using newspaper. Okay, let's have some fun. So now what we're going to do is lay down some tone. Uh, now since I'm using newspaper, I've already got sort of that gray tone here. So in order to figure out what this color is going to look like and where I put it down, I'm actually going to make a little swatch. This is light cool. This one is cool. It's cool, that's all it's called, cool. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna sort of abbreviate as much as possible. And then I can easily refer to whichever one I need or whichever one I think looks the best. So with warm gray, which means it's got a little bit more red in it. This one's dark cool. You can see it's cool, so it's got a bunch of blue in it. This one's a little more. Last one, which is clearly dark warm. So 
So I can already tell when I want something really dark, it's not quite black, I'm gonna go with this dark warm. Or I'm gonna go with this dark cool. Uh, dark cool is not quite as dark as this dark warm. Um, and I can already see a couple areas where I would really benefit from using that, as well as just plain old cool. Um, so I'm gonna organize my pens really quickly. That's cool, that's warm. This looks like a cool, this looks like dark cool. Yes, yeah, so I've got my cools over here, I've got my warms over here. And so let's come in and do a little bit of shading. So I want my light cool for a little bit to start. Because you sort of want to go from lighter to darker. And you want to have a light touch if you're using these, especially. Because what you can do is you can just lay it on and run over again. There's no need to like burn way too much about what you're doing. So I want this. Next to areas that are highlights. Now, when I've got a highlight, what I'm going to use is the actual paper. So I'm going to leave that as untouched as possible. And when I want to start getting in contour and edges and all that fun stuff, I'm going to use this to start shading it in. And what that's going to do is start bringing it like really to life. Especially when I come back in and I start erasing stuff. Because there's a lot of stuff that I still have to erase. Now we're going to go something a little bit cooler. show you is over here in this section at least we're going to start erasing because we start getting all that crap out of the way and then you have left with all that tone that you're dropping down and it's going to be the same thing over here you get that tone that you start to drop down you've got these cleaner lines here and suddenly you can really start seeing the shape just coming through so I'm going to keep going here and that's the great thing about these brushes. If you vary the pressure, you can get more or you can get less. Uh, and that really allows you to vary the tone a whole lot. I'm gonna start darkening this up. You wanna be careful because I'm using newspaper, and newspaper isn't going to react the best to layers and upon layers of this. It's just going to get the paper like really, really wet. You really want to be careful how you're dropping this stuff down because you get it looking purple, you get it looking more blue, you get it looking at some color where you really just don't want it. I'm not going to drop any more over here, over here, over here, or where I really think I should, because I'm going to build that up later by later. And you see, we've already got that gradient right there. That's light going to dark for the house later on. So I'm going to bring that out over here. This and then we give it sort of that dusky, nice fill. It's going to be the same thing here because this is going to be a darker value. And this darker value continues on through here. And this 
see why we started doing that fill because this black, this gray, this is different than this band for over here. These eye holes are always supposed to be done for. Lay on this guy in here. And that's what we want because we do have highlights and outlines around there. And we can further that. by intimating it a little bit more you know, by adding some other tone and going a little bit more neutral. So at that point, I'm pretty much okay to stop uh, because there's not much else I'm gonna be able to do with this paper. It's just gonna bleed. It's not gonna act exactly the way I want it. So that's it for now. I'm gonna go listen to some ghosts. I'm RB. This is me and Art Leads to Music. You guys had a good time. See you later.